Hey there, and welcome to Cujo Sound. My name is Bjorn Jacobson, and I've got a couple of things to say about audio sources and game objects in Unity. Trying to keep it as sound designer and non-coder friendly as possible, as always. If you've watched some of the previous videos on Unity, you will know that we went over having game objects with audio sources in the game, usually one for each type of sound and one for each game object. And if you haven't watched the other and older videos on Unity, why is game objects and audio sources, then maybe you should. While you're at it, why don't you just subscribe to the channel? Because, duh. Anyway, a problem that occurs if you have a game object with multiple audio sources on it, if they're added from the inspector as you normally would, the problem is that we cannot decipher which of these audio sources is which. So when we from a script wants to add a sound, i.e. so-called clip, to either of them, it's always the first one or the second or whatever audio source that it's adding them to, and it will always be the same one, and that's really no good because we really need that kind of control. But what if we, instead of adding them to the inspector before game start and in the editor, we add them in a script on the game object load and initialize it. In this way, we can assign a variable name to the given audio source. Like in this situation here, this is a free level that I grabbed from the asset store and the third person controller is also free, just for the sake of the example. We could have a situation where we want footsteps to play on one audio source, and perhaps cloth or weapons or whatever on the other. And instead of pointing that to a specific game object for each, we could add them to the main game object of this character, or just keep them on one child game object used only for audio. We can do this by creating a script, like if this is for footsteps and animation tagging, we could call it audio manager underscore character. And in this script, we add the amount of public audio sources that we need, and we give them a name, like AS footsteps and AS cloth. See, the reason we want more than one audio source is because each of them can only play one sound at a time. So changing the clip while one is playing will kill the previous sound playing. That works fine for one source if it's just for footsteps, but we don't want movement sounds and fighting sounds and dialogue and whatever to be played on the same audio source as that would kill our footsteps and simply become a mishmash of sounds that we don't want. And that sucks, right? Okay, back to the code. At the start function, we then define what our public audio sources are by telling it that as footsteps equals game object, which is this game object, dot add component and then what component to add. And then of course a is cloth equals game object dot add component and an audio source. Then when we start our game, our game object will now have two audio sources components on it looking just like it would if we had added them from the inspector earlier before playing. The cool thing is now that we can then add a clip to a specific one of these sources because we created them and assigned them to a variable. So a is footsteps dot clip equals something or a is cloth dot clip equals something. And we can then have different audio sources for each type of sound. We can of course also have different settings, 2D, 3D, spatialization, and whatever you really want to control. So to speed things up here, I've randomized a bunch of footsteps and they get assigned to the correct footsteps audio source whenever we take a step through some animation tagging. Now, if you're not into how randomization and animation tagging works, I have a video about that. I'll link it in the description. And you can see how it changes the clip whenever we take a step. Then I've added a bunch of cloth sounds that are also triggered through animation tagging in between the steps. And they get assigned to the other component because in either of them, I tell them which component to assign them to. And that is how you can have multiple audio sources on a game object and control them individually instead of having multiple game objects and one audio source on each. I hope that this came across as pretty clear and if you have any questions then fire away in the comments below because that's what they're in there for, you know? If you like this video, consider actually clicking like on it. Or even better, if you haven't checked out my previous game audio videos, then go ahead and perhaps check out the entire channel. Or even better, better, you can subscribe. Or even better, 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 you can support the channel by heading over to patreon.com forward slash Cujo Sound. Where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel, I would really appreciate it because it really does justify me spending time on creating this content. And time isn't exactly what I have the most of these days. Anyway, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again some other time right here on this channel. Cheerio! This is Bjorn Jacobson and Kujo Sound, signing out.